So chapter 4 of the book of Philippians, verses 10 through 13. And it reads, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me hath flourished again. Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Somebody say, I have learned. I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, yeah. therewith to be content. Mm -hmm. I know both how to be abased. I know how to abound uh -huh. everywhere. And in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yeah. My God. Now let's look at that 14 verse. That notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Right. Amen, amen. Amen. I want to entitle this that uh, let me turn it this way so I can see it better. Learning how to be content in every situation. Right. Learning how to be content in every situation. And it's not a long sermon at all. And I know y'all saying, thank God. <laughs> but uh, learning how to be content in every situation. During this unprecedented time, we are experiencing adversities on top of adversity. And dealing with severe coronavirus on every hand. For the past year, we have experienced sickness, death, Unemployment, at home, every day, all day with children, stressed, somebody say stress. stress, unpaid bills, marriage issues, and the lack of leadership in Texas. Amen. 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 And the lack of leadership in Texas. Amen. Say amen. Amen. In addition to all the trials I just named, some of us was already experiencing problems before these adversities arrived. So now it's like trouble on top of trouble. <laughs> hardships on top of hardships. Craziness on top of craziness. Hell on top of hell. Somebody say it's hell. <laughs> it's similar to the old saying, when it rains, brother Jeremiah, it pours. However, when you are a believer in God, when experiencing hardships on top of hardships, it's vital for you to understand that God gives us grace yeah. on top of grace. Yeah. 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 Though you experience an adversity on top of adversity, trouble on top of trouble, sickness on top of sickness, God gives us grace on. on top of grace. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the benefits of being a believer. Yeah. <laughs> it's very beneficial. It's good to know that he is capable to deliver us from every hardship. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just read that scripture. Yeah. And he gives us use and the he gives us uh, the, the, the capability and the capacity to endure and to overcome. Right. Hmm. He says, my grace is sufficient enough yeah. for you. That's right. That's right. No matter what you're going through, you can, you can ask God 90 times. He said, well, my grace my is sufficient enough yeah. for you to go through it. Grace on top of grace. All right, all right. But inside of your trouble, there's answers on how to find contentment. There's answers. Barry, there's, there's, there's a few answers I want to give you today. What are you seeking from God while experiencing trouble? What are, you, what are you seeking? Is it peace? Is it love? Is it strength? Is it hope? Is it faith? Is it renewing of your spirit, man, joy, understanding? Is it your job, uh, a position you're praying for, a business you want to start? What is it? What is it? Um, is it your aspirations? Uh, what's going on? What are you seeking God for? Is it a uh, marriage? What is it? What are you seeking God for? What's going on in your life? So in verse 10, Paul expresses his gratitude to the Philippians for their kind love and their generosity of giving. Though it's about 10 years, it's been about 10 years since they presented Paul with a gift to help meet his needs. All right, all right when he was first in Thessalonica. Paul was aware of their desire to help, but the opportunity or season did not present itself. Hmm. What you have to realize is there will come seasons when people will not be able to help you. All right. Let me, let me read that again. Let me, let me read that again. There will come seasons when people will not be able to help you. All right, all right. 
Because what God is doing, he's teaching you how to lean and depend totally on him. That's what he's doing. He's preparing you for that day, for that moment. For something you can't handle right now. He's getting you ready for that day. He's getting you ready. And he's making, he's molding you. He says, I'm the potter and you're the clay. And I'm molding you and I'm getting you ready for a certain season. Somebody say this season is coming. You cannot fight it. You cannot hide it. You cannot move from it. You cannot disappear from it. You cannot make it go away. No, this season is coming. We have seasons of blessing. We have seasons of trouble. We have seasons of sickness. We have seasons of mess. However, you will come out victorious on the other side. I'm just being realistic with you. Somebody how out it is. What it is. That's life. Life is not peaches and cream. Yes, and the thing about it, when you come into Christ, it gets hard. Just think about it. When you look at when I first came in Christ, I started looking at all the stuff. I said, man, I got to do all this? <laughs> Lord, I, I don't know. I, you know, I might want to renege on this one. Life is hard. I got to walk like that. I got to talk like this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to be this person. I got to do my best to walk upright and, and on and on and on and on. I got to experience all this trouble. And then you ask your disciples, are you willing to drink of the cup that I drink of? Are you willing to suffer like I suffer? Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. I'm like, oh, Lord. I don't know about this one. But that's Christianity. When you become a believer yeah. in Christ, get ready to experience certain things that you don't even expect Come to experience. That's, that's right. You will experience the unexpected. That's right. That's right. And that's in hurt, pain, mm -hmm. blessings, <laughs> love. Yeah, you're going to feel that. It, it's going to happen. Somebody yeah. say it's going to happen. Yeah. It is what it is. That's just what it is. That's right. So stop pushing the folks away who's there to help you. There are some people in your life that God has put around you to help you. That's right. Whether financially, yeah. right. spiritually, yeah. mentally, yeah. they're there to help you. That's right. That's right. To lead you and guide you and help you in certain seasons. But instead of you pushing those people that's there for you away. That's and the ones that are against you, you're keeping them around. Uh -huh. <laughs> there used to be an old uh, screw song back in the day. <laughs> And say, watch your enemies, dog. People close like you got. Especially the ones closest to you because they want what you got. But, there you go. There you go. Yeah. That's why I wanted a young musician. <laughs> but you got to stop pushing people away. You know, stop pushing the people away that's helping you. That's right. That's stop right. being the victim all the time. You're not always the victim. Sometimes it's you. That's Said that right. last time. It's you that's messing up. It's you that's giving problems in relationships. It's you that's causing all this drama. It's you that's giving hell. It's you that's making your job miserable. It's you. It's not everybody else. It's you. Stop throwing pity parties. It's not good. As a believer in Christ. But people don't owe you anything. Some people feel entitlement. Nor do they have to do anything for you. My mama said, I don't got to do nothing for you. That's right, that's right. All I did was bring you in this world, and that's all I got to do. So don't expect me to do anything. And so you got to get that understanding quick with kids. But people don't owe you anything. They don't have to do nothing for you if they don't want to. It's their money. It's their time. It's their effort. They don't have to do anything. So stop acting like people owe you something. Somebody holler, I don't owe you nothing. Yeah, you got to stop feeling entitled. But learn to be content in every situation. And that's what Paul was saying. I'm learning how to be content. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the presence. Thank you for coming to see me. But it's not about that. Because Jesus has taught me how to be content in every situation. Whether from low, whether from high, whether in need, whether hungry, whether not hungry, whether I'm blessed, whether I'm not blessed, I thank God that I've learned contentment.
Amen. Amen. <laughs> then in verse 11, Paul connotes that I'm not in want. I don't, I, I, I don't need the gifts, the money, though I'm happy with the gifts, but my joy doesn't rely in material things. All right, all right, all right. It's good to have certain things, but, but, but that's not what my heart is. Yeah, that's a lot of people's heart dwells on materialistic things. But he says, that's not me. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the water. Thank you for the food. Thank you for bringing me the, 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 the uh, tablet so I can write some more scriptures. However, that's not what I need. I learned how to be content in every state, every situation, every every problem. I learned to be content because I learned how to be content because I have Jesus. Somebody say, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. He wasn't after the gifts. He wasn't after the money, but his pleasures, his pleasures was a sure investment in the work and treasure of heaven. That what he said, that's why he said, I pressed towards the mark of the high calling, which is who? Christ. In Christ. Christ. That's, the, that's the mark. It's Jesus. He said, I'm pressing towards that mark. That's it. That's it. And that's why he told us, follow me while I follow Christ. That's it. Because Paul was to the Gentiles. That's who we are. We're not Jewish. We Gentiles. And he's to the Gentiles and he said, follow me while I follow Christ. And so Paul found more pleasures in God's people. The seeds he had planted, which now, which now is fruit. And, and his reward and riches are stored up in heaven. And that's why the Bible talks about also not storing your gifts here, your treasures here on earth. That's right. But store them up in, in heaven. That's right. Because we're like Job, naked I came. Naked shall I return. I can't take my house with me when I go to heaven. I can't take my car with me when I go to heaven. I can't take my money with me when I go to heaven. I can't take the investments that I have to heaven. You can't take none of that. So it says, go up your riches in heaven. Now somebody holler, what are you doing? What are you doing with your time, with your extra time? What are you doing? Who are you ministering to? What are you doing? Yeah. Every last one of us should be on missions. On. Every last one of us are we, we're, we're apostles. Every last one of us are messengers. Yeah. But what are you doing yeah. with the Lord case yeah. But what are you doing? Yeah. Are you storing your treasures, treasures up here? Or because our works get us to what? Yeah. That's heaven. Right. That's right. Our works, no, it gives us what? Uh -huh. In heaven. Yeah. Our reward. That's the riches that we're working for, the reward in heaven. It gets us our reward. Our works can't get us to heaven because we're not Catholic. We're not none of that. We don't believe in works getting you to heaven. No, the Bible clearly teaches that the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. That's it, that's it, that's it. So, no, your desire should be to save souls and to be content like Paul. So how to be content? That's the question. I'm going to give you four steps. Four steps to finding contentment in your situation. Four steps. To finding contentment in your situation. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. Number one, learn to depend on Christ. All right, all right. All right. Learn to depend on Christ. They're very simple. Learn to depend on Christ. Yeah. Four steps. They give us four steps within these scriptures that I read on how to find contentment in every situation. Paul speaks of self by using contentment. But this self is, 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 is I'm doing something. I'm working for something. I'm producing self-sufficiency. Uh -huh. So this contentment means self-sufficiency or uh, self-complacency. That's what he's talking about right. when he's talking about uh, the contentment that he has. Because he's not literally saying, I, 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 no. What he's saying is, he's saying, I'm learning. I have learned. That I have to literally do something in order for God to take action also. I can't just sit at home and expect God to bless me with a job and I haven't put in no application. I haven't put in no resumes. I haven't did anything. I haven't went nowhere. I haven't called nobody. Nothing. I'm just sitting there and thinking God going some, some kind of way, miraculous way, which he can if he wants to, just bless me with a job without me doing anything. He can do it. But a lot of times you got to have works behind it. 
And that's what he's talking about. He said, behind this, you got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to pray without ceasing. You got to learn how to read the scriptures without ceasing. You got to learn how to study the word of God without ceasing. You got to learn to come out to Christ. You got to learn to seek him while he may be found. That's what he's saying. He said, I'm working for something. I'm producing self-sufficiency, self-complacency to learn to lean on Jesus Christ, to cry on Jesus Christ, to love on Jesus Christ, to trust on Jesus Christ, to turn to Jesus Christ and to cleave to Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the key word, cleave. Cleave. The Bible says that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. Cleaving. What are you cleaving to? Come on, come on. Huh? What are you cleaving to? Think about that. Are you cleaving to your phone all the time? Come on, come on. Come on. Are, you, are you cleaving to YouTube? And, unless you watch the spiritual stuff. But other than that, what are you cleaving to? Facebook? Instagram? What are you cleaving to? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What videos are you looking at? What are you doing on your spare time? So to learn, uh, to, to learn to lean on Jesus Christ, to, to cleave to Jesus Christ, Ephesians 6 and 10, write that down. Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And remember I taught y'all how to write uh, abbreviation? Yeah, abbreviation. Uh, so EPH 6 and 10. The secret to learn to be strong in strength of his might. That's what it talks about. The secret to learn to be strong and strength in the strength of his might. That's it. Then 1 Timothy, 1 Tim. So 1 Tim chapter 1, 12. God gave Paul strength. 1 Tim chapter 1, verse 12. God gave Paul strength. 2 Tim, 4th chapter, 17. Then it talks about there, the Lord stood by Paul and made him strong. So 2 Timothy 4, 17. Then you have 1 Corinthians, so 1 Cor, C-O-R, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. I worked harder, listen, Paul says, I worked harder than them. He's talking about the disciples. But it was not I, but it was the grace of God that was with me. Y'all see that? He said, I worked harder than the other ones, but it was not really I, though I did work. I was the one working. I was literally working. I was literally speaking. I was literally talking, but it was the grace of God that was with me. Right. So having contentment is to learn to trust Christ. Knowing it's all through Christ and by Christ. That you must learn to cleave to Christ. Somebody say I'm cleaving. I'm cleaving, I'm cleaving and I ain't leaving. I'm cleaving. Right. So meditate on his word both day and night. Pray daily. Pray daily. Fast. Seek him while he may be what? Found. What are you doing on your spare time? Who or what are you depending on? If you seek Christ, you will find contentment in every single situation. And I mean every single situation. And then we have number two. Number two, point number two is learn what it means to be content. Learn what it means to be content. So again, contentment here means self-sufficiency, self-complacency. Greek word is autos. Autos or artakos, and which means to be self-sufficient, self-complacent. Okay, so what does he mean about self-sufficient and being content? Paul is not saying to be in self. No, he's not saying that. That'll be contradictory to the word because he's not leaning on God then. But he's saying you must do something. You must take action and work. Yeah. But a lot of us don't want to take action. That's Come on now. We don't want to do nothing. Yeah. Oh no, we just want to sit around Come on. Yeah. and drink ourselves to death. Come on. Come on, y'all. I know y'all. Some of y'all here been drinking, huh? Some of you woke up this morning to hit that gin. Some of you woke up this morning to hit the henny hen. Some of you woke up this morning to hit that great goose to get you. Loose. Some of you got up early and someone put a little bit in my coffee cup. Hey. But we do not keep our mouths closed and, and let God pray for us, do we? No, we don't. We don't keep our mouths closed and let God pray for us. No, we pray. We pray. We worship. We praise. We, we take action. We take action. Keep our, we don't keep our Bibles shut and, and think God is reading it for us. No, we read the scriptures. There you go. There you go. Praying for a certain job or position, but never, never 
And you never applied for it. As I was talking about earlier, but I never applied for a job, but you expect something to happen. You have to do something. Therefore, you must take action. Paul is saying, I have learned to be content through my what? Experiences. That's it. That's experiences it. will grow you. Yes, it will. Yes, Every it will. experience that you go through will grow yeah. you. Some experience I have that you experienced, I never experienced before. Some things I experienced, you never experienced That's before. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I remember I was talking to my, my auntie, uh, Diane, who was on her way fishing one day, years ago. And, uh, and she was telling us stories and whatever. And I was telling mine, you know, that she prepared. She's like, yeah, I did that before. I said, you know what, I'm gonna give mine. I'm gonna mess up. I'm gonna give her one. Yeah. <laughs> For being old Dr. Ross, I'm gonna give her one right quick. So I gave it to her. She said, I ain't never did that before. <laughs> she said, really, baby? You got to say, yeah. Not just once. Yeah, I got her, boy. She, she didn't know what to say. She looked at me for me. Really, baby? I said, yeah. But praying for certain jobs or positions that you never applied for, it won't work. Therefore, Paul is talking about experiences. I, I experienced this and I experienced that. And so now I learned how to be content in that situation. If that situation was to come about again, I know how to be content in it. Ain't that right, Sister Peggy? So if I want to get fired, I know how to be content while being unemployed. Right, 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 right. I know how to be content when my AC ain't working. Yeah. Right now my, my big unit is out. Something's yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. But I learned to be content back in the day. It don't bother me that much. I just go upstairs. Then I come downstairs. And it don't bother me that much. But I learned to be content. Somebody how out I've learned. Why AC man, he coming today again. That's right. But he's saying through every experience I've learned, because every experience is for me, every experience, every challenge that I go through is, is beneficial for myself. That's right. That's what Paul is saying. Everything I go through is beneficial for myself. I'm learning who my friends are. I'm learning who loves me and who don't love me. I'm learning who's gonna be there for me. I'm learning who truly care about me. I'm learning. Who's truly gonna be there for me when all the stakes are down? Who who who's who gonna drag my name through the mud? I'm learning. Who's gonna laugh at me? I'm learning. You're learning these things, and that wasn't learned in a classroom or in a uh, or in one day or overnight, but through practical experiences of life. He said, "I've learned through my suffering, through my pain, through my heartaches, through my through my trouble, through my drama." This is how I learned. I learned to be content through my experiences. Somebody says through your experiences. Yes, it is. It's through your experiences. Number three, study the word of God. That's it. That's it. That's your number three. Study the word of God. This is how you learn to be content. Study the word of God. Because remember, the Bible says the Logos, the word became what? Flesh and dwelt among us. So what are we talking about? Jesus Christ. That's what you're studying. The Logos became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's right. Because he is. He is the monogamous theos. He is the magnificent, never changing yeah. God. That's it. In Paul's contentment, the truth is the word. These are the facts. 4 and 9. It says in this chapter 4, verse 9, it says, What, what, what uh, have you learned and received, heard and seen in me? He said, practice these things and the peace of God will be with you. And that's the thing. We got to learn to practice these things. Yeah. Stop practicing other things that's it. and practice these things. There you go. There you go. Of course, you're going to practice what you got to practice on your job because you want to keep your job. <laughs> so if something new updates, <laughs> you got to get into it. You'll go back to school to learn more because this is new now. To really up your knowledge, gain more knowledge about it. So you're going to be ignorant to the fact when you get there. Right? Yeah. You're going to learn that because you got to keep your job. Right. They bring a new rule out or some type of uh, something out in your job. I don't know what y'all call it, but it all, we call it rules and all different. You know, we got to keep up with. Uh, and so you're going to learn it because you must keep your job. That's it. You must remain stable within your job because if you lose your job, everything becomes unstable. You become unstable. You Some people get messed up. When they become unemployed, they don't know how to dwell and be content in certain situations. 
If you've never been in a situation before, some situations will mess you up. And you'll forget how to be content. And how to be content is Jesus Christ. That's really the key. I can sum it up and just say, well, Jesus Christ is the key. But you must practice these things and the peace of God will be with you. Philippians 1, verse 12. Philippians 1, verse 12. Write that down. Philippians 1, verse 12. Philippians 2 and 9. Philippians 2 and 9. Philippians 2, 13. And uh, Philippians 2, 17. Philippians 2, 17. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. All these talking about, all these are talking about how you should be abounding. Um, the worst suffering, the greater the reward. It talks about in all of our working. God is working for us and through us. Even death can't stop us from rejoicing. Uh, Philippians 3 and 12 talks about in all my struggles, cleave to Jesus for he has taken hold of me. You must learn to cleave to him and watch how he takes hold of you. Philippians 4, 19. Philippians 4, verse 19 says you will have everything you need in Jesus Christ. So Paul learned in contentment when being in need, being brought low, being in hunger, abounding and having plenty and abundance. He learned how to be in contentment. And you say, well, how did, he, how did he learn to be content and all that? Brought low and hunger, abounding, having plenty, how, how, abundance. How did he learn how to be content? Some people are not content when they have as much. They always want more. But what profits a man to gain the whole world? Lose his soul. So through and by the strength of Christ, he knew Jesus was right there with him. Yeah. He will never leave you nor forsake you, nor no matter the situation. You know, God would dwell with you in your mess. He would dwell yeah. with you yeah. in your problems, in your home. Uh, he would dwell with you and give you peace, joy, power, yeah. strong mind. God would do it with a pure heart. God would do all these things. He'll teach you how to have perseverance and endurance. He'll teach you all these things because he's God. Yes, he will. Somebody ought to holler out, I'm still standing. Yeah. 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 Come what may, I'm still standing. I will serve God who can move the mountains. I will serve God who can deliver me from cancer. I will serve God who can provide in the worst condition. I will serve God who can teach me to contend in every situation. I will serve God no matter the situation. I will serve God regardless of how folks treat me. I will serve God regardless of what the doctors say. I will serve God no matter what the judge say. I will serve God. In every situation. So, somebody how to learn contentment. Learn contentment. You gotta learn contentment. Number four, the last one. The word of God must be believed. That's it. That's it. Not only should you study it, not only should you just read it, but you must believe it. The word of God must be believed. In order for Dr. Ross to become who he is he had to believe what the textbook says yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. if he go against the textbooks he'll mess up in his profession when he given surgery or animal surgery he'll mess up in his profession if he don't go about what the textbook told him how to go about it right on the railroad if I don't go about how they told me to go about it, I'll mess up. That's right, that's right. Huh? That's right. No matter what your job is, if you go about how you want to go about it, you'll mess up. Right. So you must believe in what it said. That's, right. that's, that's what I'm talking about. So you must believe in what the word of God said in order to learn contentment. I had to know how to abound in every situation. Whether from high, from low, hungry, thirsty, you must learn to abound. In order for me to learn the contentment, I had to know what it's like to be needy. You have to know what it's like to be hungry. You have to know what it's like to suffer. You have to know what it's like to hurt. You have to know what it's like to cry. You have to know what it's like not to have any sleep. You have to know what it's like to have abundance. You have to know what it's like to have plenty. You have to know what it's like to lose friends. You have to know what it's like to be cast out. You have to know what it's like to be ostracized. Who strengthens me? 
I don't care what nobody say. It's through Jesus Christ. You can call on Baal. You can call on Confucius. You can call on Buddha. You can call on Muhammad. I'm telling you, nothing won't happen until you depend on Jesus. Somebody show you. Yeah. because of Barnabas, it's not because of Apollo, it's not because of Peter, it's not because of John, it's because of Jesus. It's not because of my money, it's not because of my materialistic things, it's not because of the riches, it's not because of the cause, it's because of the house, it's not because of the position, it's not because of the title, no, it's because of Jesus. Learn to be content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't a person that you would want to look at all the time. 
sometimes. So when he would speak, it, you know, he, he would lose people's attention. Yeah, yeah. It's different when you're nice looking yeah. and you speak. You, it's hard to lose people's attention, but when you're not, yeah. you can lose people's attention. And then sometimes he had a, he would speak, and they would say, "What is he sound? What is he mumbling about? What is he jabbering? What are you talking about?" We don't know really what it's like. Yeah, yeah. If you study what I've studied, you don't know what it's like. My God, to really be a Christian, a believer in Christ, and be afraid to walk outside of these doors because you don't know if you're coming back. You don't know if you don't see your children. When Paul them during that time, the first generation church. The founders yeah. of the church. Peter, Paul, John, yeah. James. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about how they were all murdered. They were all martyrs for Christ. Yeah. They was drugged through the community. And some of them drugged, just drugged all through the streets of their bodies. Just, just as some of them head capacity, just cut off. Limbs stripped. They put John inside this bullpen thing where they had a lot of spikes, but nothing happened because it wasn't his time. They tried to ball him alive, nothing happened. It wasn't his time. They got James. They got Peter. Peter tried to walk away from him because he saw a death standing right before him. And he turned around and then Jesus met him and said, Turn around, Peter. I asked you, are you willing to drink of the cup that I drink of? Yeah. This is our foundation. That's it. That's I'm it. I'm talking about. That's it. He asked Peter. Peter said. Then he asked Peter. He said. He said. He said. Do you love me, Peter? Yeah. Yeah. Then he asked him that. Jesus said, Do you love me, Peter? Yeah. 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 Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 Y'all yeah, love me. Come on. Well, feed my lamb. Then he said, ask him again. He said, do you love me, Peter? Yeah, do you yeah. really love me? Come on. Like you say you do. Come on. Feed my sheep. He said, yes, I do, Lord. Well, feed my sheep. That's it. That's right, it. Right, he asked him one more time. He said, well, Peter, <laughs> one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. He said, Peter, let me ask you one more time. Do you truly love me? All right, all right. He said, yes, I do. He said, well, Peter, feed my sheep. He said, and after you went through what you're going to go through, he said, you'll be able to strengthen your brethren. Yeah, that's yeah, it, that's yeah. it, that's but Peter came to the point, to the end. Yeah. It's something when you know you're about to die. Yeah. It's something when it happens unexpectedly, but it's something when you know that you know that you're about to die. And Peter saw the people in front of him, and he saw them from a distance, and he turned around, tried to walk away from him. And Jesus met him and said, no, turn around, Peter. It's time. So Peter went in their hand. He, he, he said, okay, they handcuffed him, took him in. And they said, well, we're going to crucify you. You're Peter. We know who you are. Yeah. You've been preaching. You do these miracles. We know who you are. He said, well, I'm not worthy to be crucified like Jesus. He said, but turn me upside down. Can you imagine being turned upside down on a cross? Hands is nailed. Feet nailed together. Blood is rushing to your head. And they're going to leave you like that till you just die. Yeah. This is our foundation. That that's all. Yeah, that's, yeah. But Paul, Come through on. all that stuff he was going through. Oh my God. He's been beaten more times. He said three times I received 39 lashes. Yeah, that's right, so three times 39. He said, I've been stoned two times, nearly killed. I've been put out, I've been rejected, I've been ostracized by people I went to school with and graduated with and got all these degrees with. I know how to speak all these languages, but it really don't mean nothing. Yeah, yeah. All these degrees, but it really don't mean nothing. Because I'm still who they classify me as. That's how they see me, and that's how they see me. But I'll tell you what. Come on, come on. I will let nothing separate me. Separate me. From the love of 
love of God. From the love of God. That's it. That's it. So learn to be content. Yeah. In every single situation. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.